Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew, and we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 through 56, which concerns the arrest of Jesus. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who was betraying him gave them a sign, saying, Whomever I shall kiss, he's the one, sees him. And immediately he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you've come for. And they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus reached and drew out his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place. All those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you not think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? How then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen this way? And at this time Jesus said to the multitude, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a robber? Every day I used to sit in the temple teaching and you didn't seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Well, this, as Jesus is speaking, the words arise, let us be going, they show up. And... Um, Judas arrives accompanied by a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. So during this period of time, there would have been a security force at the temple that was under the direction, legally under the direction, of the chief priests and the Sanhedrin. Evidently, members of the security force are making up this arrest party. But it seems they have disguised themselves somewhat. They would not have been bearing clubs. Swords, yes. Spears, yes, but not clubs. Um, it, it, it's not unlike, you know, I, I don't know, the Boston Tea Party where the guys all showed up dressed as Native Americans. These guys have come for this purpose under cover of night, and they have taken steps evidently to disguise themselves as a mob of the people. And the sign is this, the one that I kiss. Uh, why was that necessary? Because it's dark, it's at night. Jesus doesn't have a penumbra of a, ha a halo over his head. He has to be identified. And and so he, he betrays him with the kiss. Um, ancient readers would have been horrified that Jesus was betrayed this way. I mean, it is, it is the ultimate backstabbing to betray your teacher with a kiss and this way with a greeting. Um, it, it is just as bad, if not worse, than betraying the one that you share table fellowship with, which Judas has just done that very night. Um, and he says, um, Hail Rabbi. It just sounds like saying Hail Caesar. It's not a Jewish thing to do at all. That in itself is, 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 is a betrayal uh, and would just grate upon the first century reader, especially the first century Jewish reader. And we've talked about the fact this gospel seems to be addressed to Jewish readers, readers with a Jewish background. And one of those who was there, one of the apostles drew out his sword, John, names names. John tells us the guy who did this was Peter and the service name was Malchus. And he drew his sword and he used that sword. And do any of us believe that a fisherman from Galilee was a sufficiently skilled swordsman that he could aim at the ear of Malchus and cut his ear off? No. He aimed at his head. And it seems to be a blow that comes from above down this way, not the blow of a swordsman at all, but the blow of someone who is not used to using this weapon as a weapon. 
and it is fortuitous that a man was not killed and 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 Jesus gives this message which we know that he healed that ear from the other gospel writers put it up if you live by the sword you're going to die by the sword it's one of the two times when Jesus quotes Greek authors this uh, saying was probably in common parlance at the time but it's a quote from meander from 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 the author meander and paul also quotes meander himself on mars hill at the areopagus in acts chapter 17. this is the source of that quote if you live by the sword you're going to die by the sword and then he just speaks truth which he's going to continue to do to the sanhedrin to the high priest to pontius pilate and he's saying this is to fulfill scripture you have no power over me you know, you people had every opportunity to arrest me, and you didn't. What you're doing is at night, it's under cover of darkness, it's illegal, and you know it. You didn't do this above board. And then he says to his apostles, to Peter, don't you know, don't you believe that if I wanted to, I couldn't have 12 re legions of angels? It only takes one to take care of an army. We know this from the Old Testament. And to have 12 legions of angels... At your disposal this is to fulfill scripture how else will scripture be fulfilled and so we see jesus immediately after he's prayed that prayer now he's in a place of calm and he's resolute and he's prepared for everything that he has to do ready for it and yields himself to it and as he has predicted as the scriptures uh have said as the prophecies are, um have 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 predicted and to fulfill that prophecy all the disciples leave him and flee one of them tangs along behind which we'll find out next time but this is what happens exactly as jesus said it would well we'll pick up with his trials uh, before the high priest next time in verse 57 thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word